Okay, so um, now we start with the real, because we were talking on the, this very unique and lowest place on earth and everything, and I'm talking, as you see, on life. Why is it going so slow? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> doesn't matter. No. No, this is just, it goes too small. No, uh, anyway, so you see it slowly, and you can focus on each picture and each piece of, uh, of salt. But anyway, um, it drives imagination. But anyway, uh, this very unique place, what I want to do is a short summary following what Yossi said on the various area and following what the research that was already done here as a proof. And this is kind of the a structure of this meeting. The lectures that will be given are only by those who really did research at the Dead Sea. The panels is your role to give our uh, to give us a reflection, the, the different ideas. What do you think could, you, could be utilized? What can you take home and maybe give a different idea? And this is the brainstorming that we are looking for. So um, uh, let's start and I will give you a short summary that will be elaborated and discussed further and further in these two and a half days. So uh, first, uh, what is the uniqueness of this area? So we said already that it's the lowest place on Earth, but it's not only the lowest place of Earth, but you can go out in the sun here. Actually, there was sp speaking about the so many years that we were working on this institute. If I would have been living here, I would have much less wrinkles, and you will hear about that as well. So anyway, uh, and then, uh, we are, have the high atmospheres, 6% more partial oxygen, and I think you can feel it in your breathing when you go outside. And um, you know the mud, the mud that it's also a miracle, it's an antibacterial, it has a lot of minerals, and again, you will hear in one of the lectures, not only the research, but the translational research to the cosmetics area as well. And um, we have, the salty water and the minerals with many qualities, both interapoetic and others. So this is a very special area, a unique area on, on Earth. And as I said, uh, we found, and Yossi mentioned that, we found, you know, outside the, the Earth, also some one lake that is similar to the, to the Dead Sea, and it was just published two weeks ago, and we will hear about that as well. So, um, and as I said, it's not a dead sea. It's a very vivid life, a wonderful lesson, as we say. And we can learn from all those, uh, you know, uh, from the algae and to the others, how to do the DNA repair and how to survive and how, uh, you know, the evolution can work and so on. So, and, you know, all, as I always said, it's not only converging technology um, like in, in the interdisciplinarity in Tel Aviv University, but it's also the micro and macro environment. In whatever we live, life is a combination of mental and physical. It's a combination of health that derives from the, the air that you are breathing till the mind. And culture is a very strong point on that. And actually, this is the cradle of of culture, this place. It was a beginning, and we have a lot of evidence many thousands of years ago. And you know all these places that I wish you will have time to go and see, but all those places are the, the trail of, of, of really humanity. Most of the, of, the, of the religion and most of the cultures were went through these areas, and you can go and visit, and uh, if not this time, the next time, but be sure to see it. So this is the special area, but in order to really, the, this, to, to establish this institute and to find the right justification, many years ago, what we did, and that actually was my personal start, we, we were asked to do a strategic uh, program for this area to identify the uniqueness of this area, and should I say the competitive advantage. 
And I started that with Yael, as I said, and with Dan Shachaf. And we went very, um, you know, in a very structured way to identify the right clusters that this area has a competitive advantage. And that's what we did at the Porter cluster uh, technique and so on. I, I didn't realize I will be so captured in all that. It, just, it was just a strategic plan, and I discovered a whole opportunity, I should say even a worldwide opportunity. So just to summarize some of the clusters, and you will hear much more in the next session and uh, through the two and a half days. So this is just the medical and health competitive advantage. And you can see how many different area and how many different people we can help with if we just understand, if we just investigate or maybe translate it to wherever you are. So this is all those area you will hear most of them. We won't be able to cover all, but you know, this is opening the door. And two major ones, which is one is the cardiovascular disease, and uh, the other one is, uh, you know, the, the, I say that we have 6% more oxygen, it feels better mentally and physically. But, um, you know, just one example, and um, we have the doctors here, and we'll have the, the very detailed lectures, uh, but a research that was done here by the Carmel, and it's mentioned that if we do the cardiovascular, you know, operations here, we might um, save more people and help more uh, patients. And not only that, uh, Jonathan Trent is here with us, but I met him many years ago when he told me about the NASA efforts. And here, it's not only the volcanic. You can do the same at the Dead Sea with the algae of the Dead Sea and all that to, to start and understand how do they survive, how did the evolution solve it, how do you do DNA repair and so on. And uh, Dov mentioned already Ada Yonat, she would never get the Nobel Prize uh, if not the Dead Sea. So you know, if you are ambitious enough, try to work here, you might get the Nobel. And many, many research, like Yossi said, that are done here by the Tel Aviv University groups. This is just one picture. Again, Noga will give a lecture and we'll hear more about that. I just wanted to give you a kind of a wrap up on what are we going to do at the two and a half days so you can uh, understand and maybe think uh, and prepare yourself. So we'll, we'll talk about most of these uh, researchers, we will talk about uh, the, the birds who find very nice solution to survive in extreme condition and so on. And there are much, much more, many areas that uh, we will talk about and that we are open, we are doing research and are open for more. As I said, we did a really strategic plan and one of the uh, clusters is the industry and there is a lot of industry potential here. That, uh, there is a lot that was done already. But as I said in the beginning, we hope that what the research that we'll do here will be translated to the clinic, will be translated to the industry, will be translated to the benefit of all. And these are just a few examples that were already done. So the recommended of this strategic plan was one of the recommendations, I won't go into that, was to establish such a center. And here we are, at least after 14 years, we did it. So one point, we did much more, but I think we can elaborate on all that. And so that is the first achievement, the, the Dead Sea Research Institute that was a collaborative effort of, as we heard, the Dead Sea Arava Center, Tel Aviv University, the municipality, and the very uh, gracious donors uh, on this uh, area. And just to give you a feeling, I'd, each one from his own area, just in case, um, we, we, we did uh, a list of what was already published, not what we can do, because I think we can do furthermore. 
a lot of more area of research. But this is just a first list of all what was published at Tel Aviv University regarding the Dead Sea area. So whoever you are from as, uh, any area or expertise, this could be just a starter. And uh, again, as was said, uh, we believe that research here and um, you know, trying to put more effort here will lead to peace as well. Because we already have very strong joint collaboration that you will hear in the two next, two and a half next days between Jordan, between the Palestinians, and between uh, this area. And this is a great opportunity. And if we will look into um, you know, the stories and the thousands of years back, Whenever there was collaboration, whenever the economic were vivid, peace came along. So I think this is a wonderful opportunity. And we will talk tomorrow about at least three examples of achieving uh, peace with that. This is just one meeting that we had here. So these two uh, examples are both cross-boundary examples and both that are collaboration between Jordan, Palestinians, and Israel. And you'll hear about them um, tomorrow. And also the birds, they don't know what are the borders. And we have co very good collaboration on this area as well that you will hear. Last, as I said in the beginning, we are at the right time, at the right place. The world is talking today much more than ever about converging technology, about interdisciplinary, about cross-section. We are not as uh, the, uh, even the academia and uh, the, uh, the research institute, we are not as structured as before. We are daring to cross. And this is an example. And the priorities of the United States and um, Asia and Europe are towards this main effort, towards gaining the benefit and joining forces from all point of view. So with this blessing, I do hope that the, our minds are prepared. As uh, Pasteur said, chances favor, favor the prepared mind. So I hope you are prepared to two days of very strong collaboration and, and um, joint collaboration that will go on nationally and internationally. Thank you very much.